Hi, I'm Frances Morris. I'm the director of Tate Modern here in London. Tate Modern is the youngest of the Tate Galleries. We're really young, we're only 21 years old, and I think that gives us a special place in London. We invented ourselves to be a kind of future orientated museum, to move beyond the kind of model of a never changing institution. And so we've kind of, we've evolved over time. So whenever you come here, you see absolutely the cutting edge of art. At any one moment in time, we have around a thousand works on display. I think at the moment by 300 artists from 50 different countries. So we've had a long-term commitment to reducing our carbon emissions, but we're also, I think, committed to the artists' commitment towards climate emergency. We've undertaken a lot of new initiatives, some very small and some uh, pretty major. We, uh, we reuse the rainwater that falls on this building, and a lot of rainwater falls in London, to flush our toilets, for example. Um, we uh, make sure that none of our waste goes to landfill, which is incredibly important. We have no single-use plastic uh, in our buildings. We also generate our own solar power by having solar panels on the roofs of our buildings. We even make our own honey from our own bees. And we are just beginning to start on rewilding the landscape around Tate Modern. So now I'd like to take you through a few of the displays and exhibitions that we've got on at Tate Modern that really speak to the climate emergency. One of the interesting things about the visual arts, particularly the art of the last century, is just actually how many artists have either engaged with issues around climate emergency or their art kind of unwittingly has you know, illustrated uh, the history of our landscape and helps us understand how we've got to this position. So we've got a photography display uh, about art and the environment. And it's really interesting that both includes artists who very specifically have gone out to take pictures that show how the world has been, is being reshaped uh, by, by, by climate, but also artists who just, because they were documenting the world, we can now look back and see in their work the beginnings of the crisis that is now unfolding. It's a really important and very moving uh, exhibition on at the moment that looks at the work uh, of mostly indigenous artists uh, from Australia and so much of their work is bound up with their issues of uh, social justice and, and land rights in particular and the interconnection of the loss of their uh, human rights and the uh, mineral extraction uh, from the land in Australia. So those kind of displays I think help all of us, apart from being absolutely beautiful, amazing paintings, they're, they're narrating a history that's really important and I think helps us understand how climate isn't just something that's happening out there, but it is really embedded in our landscape and our traditions. We have a, a group of um, 100 little oak trees growing on our south landscape. Uh, made from acorns gathered in Germany uh, on the site of a, a pioneering eco-project from the 1980s masterminded by the um, conceptual artist, land artist Joseph Boyce, who was a founder of the Green Party. And those trees have been with us for several months now. The project I'm really excited about is a new commission by American artist Annika Yee, which we unveil on Monday which, you're thinking about the future, is an amazing exploration of how in the future um, humanity, uh, the biosphere and technology might interact in a way that for now is unforeseeable, but it just, just begins to open up a really interesting area that of course where science and art come together. So I think that's incredibly exciting.